Here's your host, Alex Garrett. Scores! Well, I guess I am kind of that too when it comes to politics, but uh, Slapshot Man, yeah, I mean, at least one time in that beautiful video recorded by my buddy Chris Oliva, whose voice you just heard, <laughs> I found the net. Roller skating on one leg into uh, in Floral Park on the roller rink there. And I had a blast that day. That was, what, seven, eight years ago. Uh, but I started that off because today, the Saturday sit-down today, is with the National Hockey League and members of it, either former players or uh, the current commissioner, Gary Bettman, which we'll get to. But uh, I had a... Amazing opportunity for it to me. Thanks to my colleague Matt Sambolin for letting me know about this. To cover the National Hockey League's initiative, Ice Hockey in Harlem program. Uh, and it's a very cool program. You know, it, it's an initiative for the inner city kids to get out and play hockey. A, a truly amazing sport to build off character, build, you know, really... Uh, values and whatnot through the ice and and I'll, I'll tell you what I thought about going to both the Munson dinner Thurman Munson Awards dinner and this later on but I want to first get to you get you to a boatload of people I got to talk to uh, the honoree at the 32nd annual ice hockey in Harlem event was the deputy commissioner of the National Hockey League Bill Daly and he stopped by this podcast uh, on Thursday night at the at the event at Rebecca Rooftop. I'm at the Ice Hockey in Harlem event tonight, and with me is one of the big honorees, William Daly, Bill Daly. Uh, you are the deputy commissioner of the NHL. That title in and of itself. What's that like to you to have that title to be so ingratiated with the NHL? Well, it's a, it's a real honor and privilege to represent the league. Um, it's it's a great league, and we have a, a great leader in the commissioner, uh, Gary Bettman, and we have uh, the support, uh, vision, and leadership of uh, our uh, board of governors, all of our owners. Um, I've worked with the league for 23 years now, I think it is, and, and uh, you know, the business today and the game on the ice today uh, has never been better, so uh, I... I uh, Feel really proud about that, and I feel, you know I play a small role, um, but uh, but it's something that we're very proud of. Now you are being honored tonight by the Education Is the Goal High Ice Hockey in Harlem Foundation. What's that organization meant to you? So it's uh, you know it's, it's really a pioneer in this space, uh, community um, hockey uh, organizations in, in inner city areas. You know they they started their program in in 1987. Um, and the, the National Hockey League started Hockey is for Everyone as an umbrella program in 1998, and they were a charter member. Um, they've done great things uh, here for, for the youth in, in Harlem. They've, they've really put them on a path to success, the, the kids. Um, they, uh, they love participating in hockey, but they also get a good education and, and are focused on education. So they, they are uh, focused on all the right things. How can people find out about it uh, if they're interested in the program? So they're online, and um, and I know they do a, a lot of promotion, uh, but, but there are opportunities. You do have to be uh, a resident of Harlan to be a, an actual member in the program. But... Um, it's, it's there, and, and I think uh, it's a great model that people should support. And I know this isn't the only initiative the NHL does, but to get involved with these initiatives around the country must mean so much to you. Yeah, it's, it, it's great to give back, and our sport is, uh, always, always wants to give back and make, make a more friendly, inclusive environment uh, around our game. And I think you know that's been a focus of this 
Commissioner Bettman. Um, and you know, we have we have a whole department focused on on growing the game really at all levels and among uh, all, all people. And we get more and more people involved in the game. And I, I mean, to be honest, you're going to see in Dallas have the Winter Classic was a breakthrough. I mean, in Dallas, a big football town, just shows you they have some stars fans. Yeah, it was pretty incredible. I have to uh, I have to say, I've been at every uh, Winter Classic. Actually, I've been at every outdoor game we played. Uh, and I would put it right up there at the top. Uh, you know, you, you would have told somebody 25 years ago that we'd be able to put 85,000 people in, in Cotton Bowl uh, in a football stadium to watch an outdoor game between the Dallas Stars and the National Predators. They would have sent us to an asylum. So, um, you know, it, it was uh, really, really impressive, the enthusiasm around the sport. Uh, I think it put a real showcase uh, or a highlight on, on what hockey can be in every market. Um, so it was uh, it was a really special event. And the NHL, I mean, you see the parity growing every year. It's pretty remarkable to watch how all these teams from everywhere are just getting in there. Yeah, our, our uh, the competition in our league's never been closer. You know, the, the differences between winning and losing, making the playoffs or not making the playoffs, uh, has never been uh, smaller in terms of the margin of error. Um, every game is important. Every game is exciting. Um, you know, the skill has never been better. I give, uh, give all kinds of credit to, to the players and how they've developed their skills. And, you know, it's a really exciting time right now, for, for sure. And one thing more, I've got reporters' aspects on this, but I want the NHL's aspect. Islanders moving to Belmont. How's that going? What's your thought on that? Uh, well, it's going on schedule is what I'd say. Uh, you know, as I understand it, there, there's been a pretty significant amount of construction already done on the new arena. Uh, I can tell you the Islanders are very excited. The league is very excited to, to have a permanent home for the Islanders because, you know, as everybody knows, and I'm sure you know, you know, the, the last 10 years has been difficult on this franchise, not knowing what its future uh, was going to look like. Um, and so uh, so I think good things ahead uh, for the Islanders and their fans. Well, Bill, congratulations on tonight, and we will see you soon. Thank you very much, Rick. So that, that was great. Uh, Bill Daly, honored by the Ice Hockey in Harlem program. 32nd annual dinner that they've had and, and a fundraiser for this initiative that the NHL's take taking part in. I want to also thank Jeff Day at the NHL and Patrick Ryan for, you know, giving me the go-ahead. Hey, come on upstairs. We want, we want you to cover the event. So thank you for that. Now, Bill Daly's boss... Gary Bettman was also there, you know, and so I got to talk with uh, Gary as well during this event. Gary Bettman, the NHL commissioner, thanks for joining me. What's this night like here for you? Uh, I'm thrilled that Bill Daly's efforts with ice hockey in Harlem are being recognized. Uh, we take pride in the fact that our game tries to make a difference in people's lives. And there's no better example than ice hockey in Harlem. And say the NHL, do you have a quick minute to talk about that? What are you thinking of the NHL? You just had your All-Star game. We're having a terrific season. Our competitive balance is extraordinary. Uh, the game's in a good place. And there are no better, finer athletes in the world than NHL players. And locally, we got the Islanders moving to Belmont. So that's a pretty big move. Belmont's under construction, and we're thrilled. All right, Gary, thank you thank so you. much. That was special. He's the first ever sports commissioner I've had on this podcast. So thank you. To Gary for making yourself available for a minute or so to to give your take on the NHL on this initiative, and uh, I'd love to have Mom for a further discussion. Now, of course, the NHL is is touting the initiative, but I went to the executive director of the actual program, Ice Hockey in Harlem, and I asked her. Her name is Tracy Leary. I asked her what her thoughts were on the evening at Tribeca Rooftop, and at of the NHL support. And here's what she uh, contributed to uh, this podcast. I'm with the woman behind the Harlem Ice Hockey program, Tracy Leary. Thanks for coming on my podcast for a minute. Thank you for inviting me. This is the 32nd year. How has this evolved and since you've been here? And, and what's this like every year for you? This is my first year, honestly. It's evolved a lot over the last 32 years. We started out working with children and disadvantaged homes and communities, and it's now moved beyond that. It's really focused on how we hold their peer-to-peer connections and get more socially connected. When the, and when the NHL stepped in, what was your what was the reaction of the of the organization? What's your reaction when you knew that they stepped into this? 
No, NHL has been a great support of ours for many years. The Hockey is for Everyone program, and so they consistently support this program uh, annually, this event. So it's been great to have their support this, here this, this session. And when the kids see these NHL stars come into the arena and practice, what's that like? What's it like seeing their smiles? That's why I do the work that I do, honestly, is to see the children's reactions on the ice, but also in their experiences like this. It's, it's great. And so it's their first year. But obviously you've known about this for a long time now. Yes. It's my first year, but I've heard about it. I've known about it for about 15 years. Wow. And what was your role before? I worked in the financial industry before this. Okay. And, yeah. So and one you of my been... friends whose son was in the program, that's when I first heard about it. So, yeah. And now you're going to take it to newer heights, I guess. So. Hopefully. What, what's Bill Daly meant to the program, and, and why was he honored tonight? Because the NHL's long partnership with us, and his active work, it really brought the scope of like, making hockey accessible to everybody, not just black and brown children, but also women, girls. Right, right. That's and JoJo Starbuck, who's here, is the yes. figure skating yes. head, and I've known her for years, so it's great to see everybody come together tonight. So yes. thanks for having us out, and, and God you. bless you. And, how can people help out? What's the best way to do so? This is our page. Check out our site. If you want to volunteer and give your time, we have places to do that as well. We always need the support financially. So and do you find that a lot of hockey enthusiasts are know about this, or is there more awareness we could do about this program? Obviously, there's always more awareness, and marketing is always a great thing to do, but we have a strong reputation in the hockey community. And how about the kids? They must Do they, do they need a nudge to do play hockey, or do they want to no. play hockey? That's so great. They start when they're five to ten, and they oh, wow. say they're eighteen years old. So. And hockey is a great sport to build on. So it is. keep it doing is. the great work here. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. And and the personal note. So, uh, my dad, um, who was alive and kicking, really got me into hockey at a very young age, and I mean three years old. Uh, he'd have me remember all the names and logos. Of the current NHL teams, which actually had the Whalers back then. I'm old enough to remember the Hartford Whalers, the original Winnipeg Jets, the Quebec Nordiques, those teams, the North Stars. Uh, I, I'm old enough to remember all those teams. So, and and it went beyond that because my dad, any my mom, they would always get me hockey stuff and we, we buy jerseys and everything. I just was obsessed with the Rangers and the Blackhawks and hockey and the Devils at one point, Islanders. And then it turned into a real life adaptation. What I mean by that is my dad who played amateur hockey and was part of Charles Schultz, the Snoopy, you know, the Peanuts creator, his annual hockey tournaments. When I was eight years old, my dad said, we're going to turn that hockey kind of way into you roller skating around New York. So for 20 years, that has been the biggest impact, let alone knowing Sam Rosen and JD and the kindness of the garden with the Rangers and Wayne Gretzky's last game. Oh, my God, what a day that was. But beyond meeting all these people, it was the idea of that my dad had from his playing days in hockey to let's put a rollerblade on you and see what happens. That's really changed my world, my life for the last 20 years. And so when Chris Oliva and the whole group, me, we all talk about hockey and we go to the rink and whatnot. It, it brings me back to that joy, that excitement of not just rollerblading and playing hockey, but the excitement of that impact. Uh, having been made on my world and my life the last 20 years. But yes, indeed, seeing Sam Rosen, I know we talked Islanders a little bit here, seeing Sam Rosen for the first time in eons, it feels like. You know, he and John Davidson, when Davidson was in the booth, welcomed my dad up to the broadcast booth multiple times. But to see him at this event and to get a, even a word with him, was uh, quite an honor. And, and here's what Sam Rosen, the voice of the Rangers and the MC of the night, said to me on Thursday night at Rebecca Rooftop. I'm here at the NHL Harlem celebration where we're honoring Bill Daly tonight, and I'm talking with the one and only Sam Rosen. Sam, thanks for joining my podcast. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. It's a pleasure to be here. 
and this annual ice hockey in Harlem celebration brings together great people for a great cause, helping the kids. It's been a program that's been going on for over 30 years and has helped so many kids and continues to bring together the great people of the hockey world. Sam, uh, first of all, Bill Daly, what's he mean to you and to the league? What is your thoughts on him? Bill Daly is one of the, uh, I don't want to say behind the scenes because he's the number two man in the league, the deputy commissioner. But he is the guy who has given so much to hockey and to the league. He means so much to the NHL. He's a very bright man that is, knows all aspects of the game. He's helped grow the game these la- recent years. The game, I think, has never been more exciting and more appealing to people, not only here in the U.S. and Canada, but all around the world. All right, Caitlin Gold, I ask about the Rangers. What a win last night. Do they build off that? What do you see moving forward? This is a uh, team that's headed in the right direction. It's going to be tough to make the playoffs because there are a lot of teams grouped together, and they'd have to climb over a lot of teams. They need to go on a, a good winning streak. But they have good talent, a couple of really elite players in Artemi Panarin and Mika Zibanejad. They've got a goaltending situation which ultimately will play itself out, but that's a strength for the future. And they've got young players like Kako and Heedle and Howden that have... A great upside. I don't want, don't want to forget Fox and Linden, Absolutely. too. So the arrow is pointing up. In a couple of years, the Rangers will be knocking on the door. And I want to thank you for the courtesy you extended. You and J.D. extended my dad nine years ago. So thank you it's so much. It's our pleasure. Great to see you again. Great to see you. And by the way, for John Davidson to be back in the Ranger organization, that's that's huge. He's really turning the ship around here with Quinn, with the draft picks like Kako. And with guys like Heedle, and and what an acquisition. We knew he was going to be great. But Artemi Panarin, the bread man, has truly been one of the best acquisitions I've seen for the Rangers in a while. Now, a current Ranger, you know, I know I talk with Gary in the but a current Ranger, Brendan Lemieux, stopped by. He was at this event, and they honored him. But just before they did, I got a word with him at the Tribeca rooftop. I'm here with Brendan Lemieux, a Ranger right now. Uh, what's it like to be here tonight? It's awesome to be here. It's, I'm really appreciative they brought me out. Uh, it's obviously a great event, an awesome environment, a lot of you know, awesome people around here. And I'm happy to be here in support and help, uh, help Ice Hawk in Harlem. And, and actually, he was, just, uh, he was just about to get called up, so he, he couldn't really hear the rest of it. But thank you, Brendan, for that little comment there. And if you ever walked into the Garden, or if you were at a Ranger game in the 90s, you definitely heard Boom. Well, Jeff Boom actually was at this event too. And Ron Duguay was there. It was great to see him. JoJo Starbuck was there as well. And the audio wasn't as good with that interview. So I'm going to get her on at a later date for a longer conversation. But I hadn't seen her in many years. She's doing an a figure skating program with this Harlem initiative. And, of course, my roots with her go back to the Henry Viscardi School, uh, where she got to know my family and I for years through sports night. And as I told her, I said, when I go to something like this, I feel like I'm at a sports night-esque event where these athletes are giving back, just like they gave back to Viscardi for so many years. And giving back to the Harlem initiative, after being part of it as a spokesperson, was the one and only Jeff Bookaboom. All right, if you ever Madison Square Garden in the 90s, you heard Bookaboom. <laughs> I'm with him, Jeff Bookaboom. Thanks for joining me tonight. What's this like every year for you to come out and support the Harlem Hockey Program? Well, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. You know, you see the, what it can do for certain lives and certain this community and, you know, the people that get behind it, the support workers, uh, the volunteers, and and the success stories that come out of this. You know, I've been around since the early 90s, and it's pretty special stuff. And every when year... You, when you played, were you involved with it as yeah, a player? Yeah, you I, was, I was a spokesperson for throughout the 90s when I played here for the most part. So, 
it's always been um, interesting to see all the people around here and then see right. the people that come through the program and meet them afterwards. So it's and, real special. And Bill Daly, you know him very well. He was here. He was actually in the garden the night they won. What's your relationship with him like, and what's he like? What's it like to see him on? Well, I, I've met him a few times. He's a you know, class person, class individual, and uh, you know, obviously, uh, one time a Ranger fan. Not yeah, yeah. as you can say now, he, he's a fan of all 31, 30, close to me, 32 teams. But he's a good, a good man, gentleman, and good hockey person. And you know, one thing about sports is you all take time out to do this, and that's just so special. So thank you for doing that. Well, it's pretty easy for me, you know, it's, it's easy to come out and support programs like this. And do you see, when, when you were a child, do you think hockey changed your life from a very young age like yours? Well, yeah, and the, more than anything, the people involved in it. You know, through minor hockey, through junior, and then, you know, the great players I got, like the Gretzky's and SJ's and Leach and, you know, Lowell Anderson, the list goes on and on, you know, they helped shape my life and who I am and what I am, so. Well, Jeff, thank you for taking time tonight, and God bless you. No problem. Thank you. And so the athletes, the hockey guys that showed up and, and you know, show us whenever they're at these fundraising events that life is bigger than sports, it has to touch you. You know, it has to really, um, it gets to you because these are guys you grew up with watching. These are guys that you've icon, um, you've deemed iconic and now they're giving back and they've realized like Eli realized, like Derek realized that this was more than just a game. And as I mentioned that at the, you know, talking about the Thurman Munson dinner, right? That should be the legacy of sports. Not the controversies that we see year in and year out. Yeah, it's talk-worthy or whatever, but come on. These guys, they play their hearts out. Uh, whether you like them, you hate them, they play their hearts out, and then they give back at the same time or after they're done playing the sport they love. But they found a way to make sports just the thing they do, as Carl Parker told me last week. And... The thing they do, but the the thing that makes them who they are through their character building and whatever else they might learn as a as a team player. And so, I really wish a, a couple of things. I wish people, I don't know, wouldn't throw things on the field if the call is wrong. I wish people wouldn't throw bottles at these players when they are visiting in uh, in a stadium, in an arena, on a basketball court. I wish fans could take these podcasts if they listen to them and say, hey, you know what? These guys are bigger. They're doing bigger things than what they did or do on the ice because they're doing amazing things that none of, none of us could really do at the end of the day. At the end of the day. But a man who truly, I feel, exemplifies the athlete that I think everyone should strive to be in giving back and being part of it and being with it and giving back to the alumni of the NHL as well is Glenn Healy. Uh, Glenn was actually the backup to Richter in 94, but, but he had some thoughts on the NHL and he also had some thoughts on this beautiful initiative ice hockey in Harlem. I am with Glenn Healy, the 94 Rangers team, but tonight, proving once again life is bigger than sports, what's it like to be here at the Harlem ice hockey program? Well, I was there for the very first one, and I uh, I, I looked at that event, and I wondered, why would they not put glass up behind the net, because guys are going to miss the net, and we're going to injure a whole bunch of children that are watching. Okay. I don't think any of the kids thought that NHL players missed the net. Well, I got news for you. They do. Uh And I remember clearing them out of the way. But what is most inspiring for me is that some of the kids that were there for that very first one today are police officers and mentors in New York City. There's so many other kids that are going to take advantage of a great program to make them ambassadors of our game 
to give them life lessons that they can never learn from anything else other than our great sport of hockey. So are you also involved in the FDNY NYPD game at all? Or? No, uh, I'm too afraid to take part in that game. <laughs> okay. uh, these guys are some nasty guys. Uh, I think they, they've got a rivalry that's been built for many years. Yep. And I'm happy to watch. And uh, they, they love to compete. Some big guys. Uh -huh. And that's where I check out. Well, I know that the Alumni Association has been doing a lot of stuff, like the Rangers and Bruins players played against each other. What's that alumni game like every year? I think they're pretty good. I think everybody realizes you got to get up to work tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, they, they have all, you know, for the most part, when you play a long career, you, you pass cross, cross paths with everybody. Yeah. You know, you've played in four and five teams, so you know a lot of the players, you know their family, you were there when their kids were born. Uh, we're at that gentler stage now where it's, let's do a friendly, let's make it great for the fans, and let's see if we can bring a fan back to that one, that time and place when they watched a, uh, a Cashman win the Stanley Cup or when they watched a Brad Park play or they watched a Brian Leach win the Consumite. Those are important moments we can relive as, as alumni and players and as fans. And as alumni director of, I believe, the NHLPA, is that right? What's... What's that role like? Because I know you mentioned the NHLPA sort of lost their way with the alumni at one point. Well, no, see, it, for us, it, the NHLPA takes care of the current guys. I take care of the alumni, and my role is pretty simple. Our mission statement is to honor the past, and my role is to make tomorrow better for a player than it was today. And obviously you love the game. That's why you get back to it. Love the game. It's given me everything I have, and I would never change anything in this life in the world for the game of hockey and what it's given me. And when you go back to the garden, got to ask this, how how many people just clamor and say, hey, look, it's Glenn Hill. Like, how, how beloved are you when you go back to the garden? Well, if I wear, uh, wear my Mike, Mike Richter sweater, it's a lot better. Uh, but no, truly, uh, we did something special. Three generations of Ranger fan that didn't see a championship. Right. And uh, we erased 54 years of what would be misery because there were a lot of great teams that played before me as well. Uh, but we did something special for this city, our fans, and it'll always be remembered, and uh, I am proud to be part of it. Very cool. Thank you so much, Glenn. Right. And he had said something very interesting, that these NHLPA players are just had a new deal with the NHL where they're going to get health insurance and benefits and everything to support their family, and that's that's really good. I mean, we... In the heat of the battle, once again, you, you, you forget that they're actually human beings and that they do get injured and that they guy, the guys lose teeth on the ice, right? I mean, that does happen. So for the NHL to step up behind and be behind their guys is so meaningful. And my final thought on the Saturday set down about this is it feels God-given. The ability, the, the opportunity feels God-given to have been able to sit down with my, uh, with people I've grown up with like Sam Rosen, like Gary Bettman. I mean, Gary Bettman, after Wayne Gutschke's last game, uh, had someone tour us around the NHL offices in 1999. So I remember that and I, I remind him of that. So to see all these people again when I'm older and, and a little more into it with the podcasting and to say, hey, I've got a podcast. I'd love to have you come on for a minute. And they do. That's that's a blessing from God. So if if a little peanut like I've saw on Instagram and Facebook, Instagram Alex Gene NYC, Twitter Alex Gene NYC can be propped up on a subway car wearing his little ranger jersey at months old. And then to actually interview the National Hockey League commissioner and the people around the sport that I've really grown up with the most and followed. Yeah, baseball's up there, but hockey also, I remember how much roots and deep-rooted hockey is. Then you too can achieve really uh, anything. And I'm I'm thankful that I have colleagues like Matt Sambolin and who get what I'm trying to do with this podcast that Jeff Day and Patrick at the NHL didn't really know me from Adam, but they said, come on up and cover this. That Sam and JD, oh, Sam and Gary Bettman and Bill 
Daily was honored, and all these different folks, Buka Boom, stopped by and gave a word about this foundation, about the their time in hockey, Glenn Healy. And, of course, with the Rangers uh, and Islanders, every year you go to the run with the Rangers, and in Flushing you get to see Rod Gilbert, who literally bear hugs my dad and I. It's amazing because I've known Rod since I was a little kid, too. And so for all these guys to take time out to remember you and then to come back and be part of foundations and events like Sports Night, that's what it's all about to me. And I hope it is to you. And I hope the next time you feel tempted to boo a player, remember they're doing things off the ice that we could certainly learn from time and really time again. But today, the Saturday sit down with the NHL, very proud to bring it to you, and I'm very proud to have this, start this connection with the NHL, and I hope you enjoyed what you heard today, I hope you enjoyed hearing from Bettman, and I hope you enjoyed hearing from Sam Rosen and and so many others, and remember (laughs) to enjoy, as Thump and Tom Connors would sing, The good old hockey game. Have a great Saturday, everybody. Hello out there, we're on the air. It's hockey night tonight. Tension grows, the whistle blows, and the puck goes down the ice. The goalie jumps and the players bump and the fans all go insane. Someone roars, Bobby scores at the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Second period, where players dash with skates of flash, the home team trails behind. But they grab the puck and go bursting up and they're down across the line. They storm the crease like bumblebees. They travel like a burning flame. We see them slide the puck inside. It's a 1-1 hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Third period. Last game in the playoffs, too. Oh, take me where the hockey players face off down the rink. And the Stanley Cup is all filled up for the champs who win the drink. Now the final flick of a hockey stick and a one gigantic scream. The puck is in, the home team wins the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old hockey game. Oh, the good old hockey game is the best game you can name. And the best game you can name is the good old.